Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman, here as always with Tom or Tom. How's it going? Well, Tony, it is instant reaction time. Let's react. See, I waited. I waited. So the reaction was late, but now it's going to be instant because we have a commitment to talk about, Tony, and it is this is a big one on the defensive side of the ball for Ohio State. Yeah, Glenville cornerback Bryce West, one of the uh, top two players in the state of Ohio, depending on, on who you would ask. Uh, one of those guys that you have to get as one of the best players in the state at a position of need, a position that you you really can't have enough good corners because... They can then become good safeties as well, if if, if need be, and or become nickels. So yes, Bryce West, five eleven, one seventy five, uh, is rated by rivals as their number thirty one player. ESPN as their number twenty seven player. That's five star range for those two outlets. Um, composite is as the top one hundred guy, and like I said, arguably the first or second best player in the state, depending on who you talk to, and uh. A solid get for the Buckeyes, a guy that, um, as much as it's as, as as important as it is to get him, it's also as important to keep him from going somewhere else like Michigan. And Michigan people were feeling pretty optimistic about Bryce West at at some point fairly recently, and that was always kind of one of those I'm going to need to see it to believe it that a, a Glenville kid is going to pass up on an Ohio State offer and it's uh, someone who is very you know very hotly being pursued by Ohio State to go to Michigan and then uh the week that he was uh he was coming into Ohio State for an official visit and uh he was supposed to make an unofficial to Michigan and all of a sudden the unofficial to Michigan got canceled and it was kind of like uh-huh okay so I think I can read the tea leaves here that this is a big, big win for Ryan Day and Tim Walton and the rest of the staff, because this is a guy who this is this is a real potential difference maker for the next three, four years in this in the rivalry in college football on the whole. With the way college football is going right now, you need good corners. You cannot get by with just OK corners with the way the game of college football is going. We have seen Ohio State teams kind of have their season short-circuited by not having enough corners on the roster. I mean, the 2020 season, by the end of that season, they're playing a 4-4 against Alabama in the uh, in the national championship game, and that was not by choice. That was, they, they just didn't have enough corners because they had missed on guys. They had a year last year where they had guys just constantly not being healthy, and they're starting a true freshman in uh, Jair Brown against against Wisconsin about a month into the season. You have seen a lot of different ways where, not having enough good corners can really, really stress your program. This is now the, a very, very big building block for what could be a really outstanding corner class for Tim Walton and the Buckeyes. Yeah, and it's important to, like I said, get as many as you can. And we've seen the last two years, a true freshman has started for the Buckeyes at corner, and, and that's not even including redshirt freshman J.K. Johnson in 2022. Obviously, Denzel Burke started the entire 2021 season, as you mentioned, Jair Brown got a start last year and as you're expected to lose Denzel Burke who knows what happens with uh with Jordan Hancock does he play well enough but you know, th- th- we've seen at this point that guys need to be ready to play pretty early on and Bryce West is a guy that you know decent size like I said 5'11 about 180 pounds but is um is okay being physical like he will c- certainly help out and run support uh, is, is really really fast. He, he has some plays on offense in his uh, highlight package, and I'm going not. I'm not going to compare him to Marshawn Lattimore, but Marshawn Lattimore was also a guy who was about that same size, and was also very good on offense, very good on defense. I won't use. I won't go all the way back to the 2004 class with another offense defense, Glenville cornerback receiver, but I, I do think. Um, the the history of Ohio corners who are also outstanding receivers, Gary on Conley, Denzel Ward, I mentioned Marshawn Lattimore. There are others as well, but he's a an overall athlete, very talented. I could see him honestly, I could see him anywhere in the secondary for the Buckeyes. 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, you certainly can start with outside corner versus, you know, playing in the slot. And that's sort of just sort of the the base options you got. And could he end up at one of the safety spots? Absolutely. That, you know, he's he's athletic enough that I think you could you could slot him in just about anywhere. I, I, ideally, I think he's, you know, he, he plays outside corner for them. But, you know, you, if you have a they had a nice corner class in 2023. This is the first of what could be a very, very good corner class in 2024. Then you have the luxury of either you've got three, four, five really good corners you're feeling good about, or you've got three, four, five good corners you're you're feeling good about, and one of them can move to safety. So that's either one of those are incredible luxuries right now. And I think maybe the what one thing that we need to talk about here is the importance of when you have a spot like corner that is a position that you know that is a very very uh, you know highly valued position in college football right now if you have guys in state like Bryce, Bryce West like Aaron Scott you have to get them those are those are guys you've got to get those are those are crucial crucial building blocks for your class to get those in state guys it's like when they had offensive linemen you know you, they've had two a couple very good offensive line classes in the state of Ohio the last couple of years, and they've really capitalized on that and built that started building the, you know, the cornerstones of these classes around in-state guys at a time when you've got NIL and guys are flipping their commitments and, you know, you're going to have guys play one year and hit the transfer portal. If you're bringing in Ohio guys who probably have grown up as Ohio State fans and, you know, anyone who's affiliated with Glenville, you would assume has probably grown up as an Ohio State fan. Those are guys who are maybe going to be more likely to come and play for you, more likely to stick around and play for you and not hit the portal at the first sign of, you know, I'm not starting as a true freshman. I'm going to hit the bricks. Those are the guys you've got to get to start building your class around because you can't just shop nationally for everything. You, th- that's just realistically in terms of resources, in terms of reliability. You generally, when you see the misses late in the cycle, or the flips late in the cycle, those are the out-of-state kids. Those are the Florida kids or the California kids or, you know, guys from all around the country. The Ohio kids have generally, if they commit, they stick, they stick it out, and they're, you know, they're they're valuable long-term pieces for the program. That feels like a really important co- part of the conversation for a guy like Bryce West. Yeah, if you don't land the Ohio kids, it's like trying to win at bingo without utilizing the free space. You know, it's... You could do it, but it just makes it so much easier if you've got that middle middle square there that has been taken care of. So, um, again, this is the, the start of what is going to be, not the start, he's the second defensive back committed in the class, joining um, Jalen McLean out of Orange, New Jersey, who is a safety. Uh, and, again, this is, I think we've talked with Mark, you and I have talked about this, like, Maybe maybe seven guys, seven defensive backs in this class, and whether that's three corners, four safeties, four corners, three safeties. If it's the right corners, maybe it's five. <laughs> you know, you, you you're not gonna. They're kind of like defensive ends. Like you don't say no to five star defensive ends. You don't say no to five star corners. And this is a, a very good start, and certainly not the end. And I do wonder how much of um, now that you've got one. Uh, will others will this bring others aboard you know the quarterback is the pied piper now you've got your first corner let's start building that class and you know the nice thing with the you know with the quarterback you've got the one and then he's building the rest of the class when you've got a corner oh you need you need someone on the other side of the field right and those are guys who are going to be spending the next three four five years together in very close proximity in those meeting rooms in you know at practice every day they're going to be competing, but they're also going to be working cooperatively. And so these are the guys you're going to be spending maybe the most time with over the next, uh, you know, the next three, four, five years of your life. So if you've got a good relationship with them, then, you know, that could be that you could really be the Pied Piper or bring in another guys. And there are there are a couple other guys, you know, a couple of the names we need to talk about, I think, here in terms of that cornerback room. Uh, Aaron Scott, obviously out of Springfield, is the other guy who Michigan fans have been feeling alternately uh, very encouraged and less encouraged about over the span of the last few months. And then uh, Miles Lockhart as well, another corner. You know, if, if you get those three guys, I think you've got to feel like that's, 
you know, that is like an A plus corner class to me, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, I know everybody, everybody knows who Aaron Scott is, the outstanding corner in Springfield, who is the other top one or two player in the state of Ohio, depending on who you ask. And he's a very, he, he's a lockdown physical. Uh, I think you saw him at camp last year and he was pretty outstanding and then has just continued to play well as a, a junior this past season. Miles Lockhart, maybe a, pe- a lot of people don't know about. He's from Arizona, Fascia High School, uh, a guy that Ohio State has really liked and offered. He's been offered for quite a while. He's not the biggest guy. Listen, about 5'10". Uh, maybe he ends up as as a nickel, but is also this year going to be. You know, he he play, he's played running back in the past. He's going to play a lot of running back, I guess, this year. So when you see highlights from him, you're you're going to see a very very athletic and quick player, and uh, a guy that will probably have quite a few highlights, long runs, and things like that. But you know, Tom, I I seem to recall they did pretty well the last time they went out to Arizona. For a, an athlete as a corner, his he, his name um, Denzel Burke, who started as a true freshman back in 2021, as we mentioned. So maybe heading back to the well for uh, another one there. Yeah, and and he's someone who a lot of the rating services still have ranked as a running back. So you know, I mean, that's uh, you know how, how where does he stack up with the other guys? That's a little bit of a that's a little more of a subjective exercise at this point. But you know, you have. When you look at the other two, the two in-state guys, Scott and West and the 247 composite both ranked among the top five corners in the country. And that, to me, I mean, that I remember in the 2017 class, it was Jeff Okuda and Sean Wade was, were number one and number two in the cornerback room. Think about how important those guys were on some pretty, pretty good Ohio State defense, especially 2019, that 2019 Ohio State defense where you got Okuda outside, Wade could play in the slot. That that was maybe the best Ohio State defense we've seen in decades, and those two corners, you know, having a Chase Young doesn't hurt, having a Jordan Fuller doesn't hurt, but you know, having those two corners there, that was a huge piece of that. If these two guys, if if West, and then you know potentially add a Scott down the line, and you know we'll see what happens with Lockhart, but you know this is this is why i'm talking about this as as a potentially like a very crucial first building block to what could be an incredible corner class cuz that's the kind of corner class that you know 2025 2026 when you're potentially facing a uh, Lincoln Riley USC team in the Big 10 championship game do you think you're going to need corners tony that feels like that might be an important part of uh facing a uh, potential Lincoln Riley USC offense Whoever his uh, whoever his offensive coordinator and whoever his quarterback is at that point feels like you're going to have to be able to defend the pass a little bit. Yeah, and there's another kid in state, uh, Terry Nichols from Cincinnati, who has off- just recently offered from uh, by Alabama as I think visiting Mich- has taken official visits to Michigan, Kentucky, uh, Penn State, Pitt, maybe saving one for a special in-state school. Who knows if um, if Ohio State makes the push there, but. Overall, it's uh, things are just beginning to to bloom in the secondary for the Ohio State Buckeyes in their 2024 recruiting class. Anything else, Tom? Before we go, no, we should probably get this posted before there are any other commitments because you know this this is a busy time of year for the uh, for the recommitment uh, sort of uh, side of the business. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to thank you all for joining us. As always, come join us at uh, BuckeyeHuddle dot com. Become a member. Say hello to us there on the message board. All kinds of stuff going on there. Recruiting is is going crazy right now, as you know. So you can find us there. You can also find us at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle for all kinds of videos such as this one. Uh, live shows, interview sessions, highlights uh, from uh, prospects that uh, we're watching in person, things like that, uh, all at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle and also facebook.com slash Buckeye Huddle as well. So thank you for tuning in, and we'll talk to you guys later.